In our two excerpts from Matthew today, Jesus is expanding his circle, the circle of God's love and inclusion, and breaking norms and customs by doing so. Just before this passage, Jesus has healed a man and told him that his sins are forgiven. The problems Jesus' opponents have with him are growing. Jesus has healed a man, had the audacity to say his sins were forgiven, and now he's eating dinner with the wrong kind of people. He's got friends in low places, as one of the commentators puts it. Matthew, this person he's called to follow him, is one of those wrong kinds of people. As a tax collector or customs official, he's expected to be a cheat and is certainly, to some extent, collaborating with the oppressive empire. As much as he deals with Gentile money and Gentiles in general, he's seen to be ritually unclean. Jesus still calls him as a disciple and then breaks bread with Matthew and people like him. When Jesus' opponents see this, they ask, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? In the next part of what we hear, Jesus again violates ritual purity laws and two different kinds of people approach Jesus. First is a leader whom Mark and Luke record as a leader in the synagogue, and the NRSV just slips that in for continuity's sake. This respected man comes to Jesus because his daughter has died. Even already dead, this man believes that Jesus can make a difference. Second is a woman with a bleeding disorder. She's lived with this condition for 12 years and would have been excluded from most worship life because she's seen as unclean. She comes up not to Jesus' face, but behind him, timidly, not asking for help, but wanting to touch the fringe of his mantle. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus doesn't ask, who touched me? Rather, Jesus turns to her and tells her that her faith has made her well. Then he goes with the leader, shoes everyone out of the house, takes the dead daughter's hand and raises her from the dead. As Anna Case Winters puts it, in the space of these few verses, Jesus is touched by a hemorrhaging woman and touches a dead body. He does not protect himself, but extends himself for those in need of healing. It's not because ritual purity is unimportant, but because ritual purity is secondary to the the demands of mercy and compassion. Jesus is putting his into action what he's just warned his opponents about. He's just said those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. He's spending time with sinners and tax collectors and others who are ostracized by good religious people. Jesus is healing people who are ritually impure because they need the healing. That's how Jesus comes to us today. The point of these passages is not to go out and find people we deem sinners so that we can be a part of their redemption. Rather, in giving us this model and example, Jesus is showing us how expansive God's love is and how God longs to draw all creation into right, restored relationship with God. In his book, The Bible Tells Me So, Peter Enns writes, many Christians have been taught that the Bible is truth, downloaded from heaven, God's rule book, a heavenly instruction manual, follow the directions and out pops a true believer, Deviate from the script, and God will come crashing down on you with full force. 
What that perspective on the Bible winds up doing is making us ask ourselves how passages from the Bible are about us. We ask, what are we supposed to do because the Bible tells us so? But the passages today from Hosea to Romans to Matthew short-circuit that. Both Testaments tell us that the greatest commandment is to love God and our neighbors. That's what we're supposed to do, full stop. But the passages we hear today aren't about us and how we're supposed to act. The passages today are about God, God's deep love for humanity, God's desire for us to be in right relationship with one another, and God's willingness to short-circuit certain rules because the healthy don't need a physician. Next week, we'll hear about the disciples' first mission with a very narrow focus. Before we hear that, though, we hear today and read about Jesus expanding who can be included and who will be a part of his community. The wrong kind of people. And we hear it all in the context of magi who come from far off to worship the new baby king and Jesus directing the disciples to go into all the world, teaching people to live as he's taught and baptizing them into the work of the church. These passages today are about God inviting us into deeper relationship with God. If these stories are about us in any way, they're about us as tax collectors, us as sinners, us as people with a condition that keeps us separate from our community, us as dead girls needing the healing hand of Jesus to raise us to new life. That's what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to be among us, fully God and fully human, to heal us and raise us from the dead, becoming human that we might become divine through his work. None of this was done because we've deserved it or because we've earned it in any way at all. No, God came to be with us in Jesus because of God's great love for us, love so powerful that it defeated death and has command over death and life. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. From the font to the table, Jesus calls us to return to him, however close or far we've strayed. In showing love to us, God bids us to love our neighbors and dwell in God's presence. Amen.